This Bigfoot sighting comes out of White County, Arkansas from December the 28th of 2015. The witness says that she was driving down Highway 258, going to the store, and that it was around 5 p.m. Now, she says that she was driving slower than normal due to some local flooding lately, and that this has really brought out the deer. But already along this drive, she has seen two different areas with deer standing near the road, with one group having three in it and the other had six. But when she headed back from the store, she knew to take it easy. She says that she was coming up on one of the spots that she had seen the deer at, that she slowed way down, mainly because there was a sharp curve there as well. She said that while she was slowing down even more, that suddenly something jumped out in front of her. She says at this point she slammed onto her brakes, that this creature seemed to have came out of the pine trees, saying it was in a dead run, and then took a leap out onto the road. While she says that she was just sitting there in awe of what she was seeing, that it took one, maybe two steps to clear the road, and this creature was gone back into the woods on the other side. So as she was sitting there, she wondered if she actually saw what she thought she just did, that this creature was on two legs while running at a very fast pace, that she remembers seeing fur, and that she would assume that this thing stood at least eight feet tall that when this creature jumped in front of her car, that it was only about a single car length away from her. She said that this creature was carrying a fish, a long fish, thing that later her husband told her that it might have been a stick or something, but she said no, it was a fish, saying that she is a country girl and that she knows a fish when she sees one saying that its fur was longer than a bear's would have been. While its color was dark brown, it had a reddish hue to it, saying the headlights lit it up well and gave her a really good look at the color, while saying that it was coming from the direction of the lake. Now she says she got the car going again and went on home. But when she pulled in, that her husband came out to help bring in stuff. When he noticed something was wrong and asked her what was wrong, she said that the deer was out bad, so he asked her if she had hit one. She told him no. Then he asked her why she was shaking so bad. The witness said that she didn't even realize that her whole body was still shaking. She says as she started telling her husband what had happened to her, that tears started running down her face, while her heart was pounding away in her chest, while her body kept shaking badly. She really didn't know that it shook her up so bad till she got home to her husband, she says. Now she said that her and her husband was going to go back the next day, to see if they could find any footprints of this creature. She also said while sitting around the house that they hear weird howls and noises and that they had always joked about this being Bigfoot noises. That she didn't really think that these creatures were real. But now it makes her a little nervous when they hear these sounds. So what do you think about this sighting? Drop me a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you can keep up with all of our latest videos. This Bigfoot sighting report comes out of Alpine County, California. The witness says that there were three of them in their hunting group, that they were hunting deer. They already had a hunter on top of the hill, saying that he hiked in while it was still dark. He and his uncle started up the hill at dawn. They parted ways about halfway up. 
The witness uncle went to the southeast, and he went to the northwest. So he says that the south side of the mountain is where he was. The area was open with sagebrush and scattered cypress trees, while in the gulches were thick timber groves of pine trees, clustered together with openings that he described. He says that his plan was to stay within the tree groves while working his way to the peak driving the deer up to the top, where one of their group was already waiting. He says that he worked the grove until he had to cross an opening to another grove just below the peak. He says as he got to the next edge of the tree line to the next grove, he found what looked to be a blind, saying it was made out of branches interwoven into the branches of another large tree. Now at this time, he says, he started getting a feeling that he was being watched. He said that there were two other hunters camped close to them, but he didn't know them or their plans for hunting this day. He just assumed that it was them that made the blind and was probably watching him. So he said that he just continued into the grove. Now being in the grove, he says that he found a tree about 25 foot tall. This tree was placed upside down next to another tree about 50 foot tall saying that the base was about 18 inches and that it had been snapped off, not sawed off, with some of the branches being woven into the bigger tree, kind of the same way the blind was woven. He guessed that his elevation was around 8,500 feet at the time, with the peak being 10,000 feet, and that their camp was around 7,000 feet. Now he says that the feeling of being watched returned even greater than before, stating that he started his way back up the hill, leaving the upside down tree. While moving towards the peak, he says he saw a silhouette of a bipedal creature. This creature stood eight foot tall, that it was just standing there watching him, he said, that it was perpendicular to him facing uphill in almost a runner's stance, while looking over its right shoulder straight at him, with its wide muscular torso turned slightly towards him. Now he said that this creature's forehead looked small with its head being slightly pointed, that he thinks it was a male because he didn't see any breasts on this creature saying that this creature also had a very pronounced brow. He also said that this thing's head was small for the rest of its body, while having extra long arms and covered with hair, while looking to be lean but very muscular, saying that this creature's hand had long palms and fingers. The witness said that the fingers looked to be curled back, while having a thumb that curled forward, forming a backwards capital C type shape. He said that this creature then sprinted up the hill. The witness stood there watching it until it vanished behind the trees. He did say that when this creature took off up the hill, that it took off as fast as a deer does from a standstill. Now the witness said he went over to where the creature had been standing but that there were too many pine needles on the ground to leave any footprints, that when you stepped on them, that they just bounced back. Now saying that he used the tree that the creature was next to to gauge its size. That's how he got eight foot in height. Now as for the color, the witness said that it was very shaded, that it was dark in color, that it could have been a dark brown or maybe even a black that whatever sunlight was coming into the grove was behind this creature, making it hard to tell. He says that he was in a state of shock and almost not believing what he saw, but that knowing that he did see this thing just amazed him.
Now he says about a week later, he went to a hypnotist, saying that he had never went to one before, that he was hoping that the hip hypnotist, sorry, could help him notice something that he might be missing. With the stress of the sighting and everything that was running through his mind at the time, saying that this helped slowing things down. The hypnosis really helped him, he said, confirmed his sighting. Now before this sighting, the witness never believed in Bigfoot type creatures. He said he brought up Bigfoot later that night in camp, with the other two making fun of Bigfoot hunters. So he just joined in on the fun, never telling them about what he had seen that day. He says that Sunday morning, September the 23rd of 2012, will stay with him forever. Wow, that was a nice sighting he had for sure. I don't know about the hypnotist though. I might have skipped that part if it was my sighting. But hey, they say it can help bring stuff out that you just don't realize at the time. So I think this was a good sighting report. This Bigfoot sighting comes out of Attawa County, Alabama, and it contains sightings from December of 2012 and a sighting from January 27th of 2013. With both sightings coming from the same witness, the witness says that his first sighting happened in December of 2012, that it was around midnight, as the witness was heading home, saying that it was raining but not too hard, just steady, that he was driving down the highway through the countryside, and that they were guardrails on both sides of the road while saying that they were woody swamp areas on either side of the road, stating that his headlights lit up all of the reflectors on the rails going down a good distance. Now the witness said that about halfway down the guardrail that there was a dark spot, like there was a gap in the rails. Now, when the witness got closer, he said that he could see that it was some kind of animal, that this creature looked to be large and hairy. But this creature got over the guardrail and was gone back into the swampy woods before the witness said he could get a close enough look to see more. So he said he just put it to the back of his mind, at least until a week or two ago when the witness said he was leaving for work, saying that it was about 8.30 in the morning and that again there was a light rain that morning as well. That he pulled out onto the same highway that he had his first sighting on. He says that as soon as he pulled out onto the highway, he saw something weird and strange that was about two to 300 yards down the highway. It was on the side of the road. Something wasn't right with what the witness was seeing, he says. As he says, this creature walked onto the highway in front of him. That it wasn't in any hurry that it just walked across and stepped over the same guardrail as in his last sighting. He says the creature stepped over the guardrail with ease. He said he watched it as it walked down the ditch and back into the woods. That where this thing walked out, that it was pretty clear and that he got a really good look at it. Even though it was still at a good distance. Saying that this creature had short legs compared to its upper body. While its head stuck out from its shoulders. Now the witness says that the creature's arms were very long, that they hung down almost to its knees, that the creature had hands as well, and that it was all black in color. At first sight, the witness said that he thought that it was a man, but as he got closer, he realized that this thing wasn't a man at all, just by how much bigger this thing looked as he got closer to it. 
The witness says that whatever this thing was, that he had never seen anything like it before. The witness said that he hunts all the time in these woods. That he would say that it wasn't a bear or any human he had ever seen. That this thing was big and that it gave you a chill just seeing it. Now in the follow-up investigation, the investigator said that he is very familiar with the area where the sighting happened having hiked in the area many times before. That it is a fact that it is very rural and forested, while having an abundance of wildlife, and that there are many water sources as well. Saying that the witness was very familiar with the area and the local wildlife, saying that confusing what he saw with another animal was just out of the question. The witness also said to the follow-up investigator that this creature was human-like, but that it had its own different attributes as well. While they measured the guardrails, they were around three foot high, and that a normal man would have a hard time just stepping over them, especially the way this creature did. So what did you think about this sighting report? Drop me a comment down below and let me know. This Bigfoot sighting happened on June the 12th of 2019. It's from Flathead County, Montana. The witness states that he was driving up Crane Mountain while looking for a lake that a good friend had told him about. Seeing that he had never been this way before, he was looking to find a new fishing site that the road that he was on was an old mountain road, only about a car and a half wide. Now, while he was driving on this old road, that he came to a sharp curve, that once he was coming out of the curve, that he saw a very large black mass on the left side of the road. Now, as he saw this creature, that it took off up the hill, he says that it took him about two, maybe three seconds to get to where this thing had been. Seeing that he got to the spot so fast that the brush was still moving from this creature running through them. When he noticed that the creature was still navigating up the hillside. Moving up the embankment kind of hunched over while using his arms in a long swinging motion to help propel itself up by using the trees. Now the witness said that when he first seen the creature by the road that it was also crouched down at that time. But that now that he was watching this thing move up the embankment while grabbing trees from the back and helping launch itself forwards. The witness mentioned several times how he was just amazed at the movement of this creature. Just the fluidity of its movement was so smooth that there was no way a person could move up that embankment through that kind of terrain and stay that fluid in their motions. Well, being sure a bear wouldn't be moving in that fashion either. Not through that kind of terrain. Now the witness said that he watched this creature move 30 to 40 yards up the embankment. That he had gotten out of his car watching this thing. While probably took less than 10 seconds for the creature to cover that distance, he was still watching this creature when all of a sudden it stopped and stood straight up. So the witness says that this is the first time during the sighting that he could see just how massive this thing was. That even being 30 to 40 yards away, that he could just see how huge and the sheer bulk of this thing. Saying that this creature was impressive why it blocked out most of the area in between two large trees. When the creature suddenly looked back at the witness, that possibly it was trying to figure out the threat level, or maybe it was wondering why the witness had stopped and gotten out of his car. 
Who knows what this creature was thinking? Now the witness said that this creature pivoted and started back up the hill, saying that not much sunlight was on the road or on the embankment. But once the creature got to the top of the hill, now the witness said that as this thing stepped into the sunlight, that its color changed to a bright copper color. While this creature's arms and legs seemed to be moving in tandem to each other, saying at this time the witness could see the hair hanging from the creature's arms. As the sun shined through the hair, the witness said it looked to be two to four inches long in places. And that the hair on its arms kind of glowed a copper color as well. The witness then said that it turned and started down the other slope. That he watched this thing until it was out of sight. Now when the witness met with the BFRO investigator at the location of the sighting, that by where the creature was, that they figured it was at least eight foot tall, and that the creature was three and a half to four foot in width at the shoulders. Now when the BFRO went to investigate, that they found what they said was likely footprint of this creature. Now here are those pictures. This one does look interesting to me. I can see the hill, which does seem to lead to maybe a wider place where the toes should have been. So yes, I can see how they would say that this is a print. Now in this picture, I don't really see the print, which is what happens when you take these pictures sometimes. When in fact, if you was there looking at it, that it might stand out as well as the last picture showed. And here is a picture of the narrow gravel road the witness was on at the time of the sighting. And that is the curve the witness said he was rounding when he had his sighting. Now this is the embankment that the witness watched the creature move up. So yeah, I can see that it looks like it would be a hard path for a human to move. While being smooth and fast, that would be hard for anyone to pull off. At least by looking at the thick brush and down trees. Like I said, these pictures you can see on the BFRO. I didn't use all of the ones they had. So what do you think about this sighting? Drop me a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you can keep up with all of our latest videos. This Bigfoot sighting comes out of Swain County, North Carolina from January the 31st of 2020. The witness says that her and her husband wants to report their sighting of a huge Bigfoot. While they were taking a shortcut home, as they often do, that they were cutting across the mountains here in western North Carolina heading home, saying that she was driving along the river, that they were on Needmore Road, and that this road runs along the Little Tennessee River for several lonely miles. Stating there was no traffic on Needmore, when they saw a very strange and odd looking man on the side of the road. Well, at least that's what the witness said she was thinking at the time. But as they passed the creature, it stood up. Now, the witness said she was watching this thing in her mirrors, and she told her husband that it wasn't a man, that it was a huge Bigfoot. She says that she didn't want to go back, but that her husband did. So they came to a spot where they could turn around. Now she says that after they turned and was heading back, that this Bigfoot creature was still standing up, that they stopped about a hundred yards from this thing. It didn't run or try not to be seen, that it just stood there looking at them. While sitting there watching this creature watching them, she said her husband wanted a better look at this thing, so he got out of the jeep. This thing was huge, the witness said, at least eight to nine feet tall. 
Now, with her husband being out of the car and looking at this thing, she said he couldn't believe what he was seeing. She said that this creature had long black hair all over its body and that it was just massive. This creature was still watching them after about three minutes. This really started to make her nervous and scared. She said she yelled at her husband to get back into the jeep with tears in her eyes. He got back in and she said she got out of there. Now here are some photos from the BFRO website showing the area and river. This first picture shows that they were close to a national forest and that Bryson City is the closest town to where the sighting happened. Now this picture is of the river that the Needmore Road runs with for several miles. This picture of a map shows the road and the river on it. Now here is a Google map overhead of the road and the terrain around it. As you can see, not very much around but forests and rivers. So yeah, this is kind of a place that I would expect to see one. Now this next picture shows where they had pulled over and watched this creature watching them at. Now I reckon that's her husband standing where the creature was standing. So yeah, that looks about a hundred yards out. It looks like to me that this Bigfoot just didn't care if he was seen or not. Or maybe he didn't think that they could see him at that distance. I just don't know why it would just stand there. Maybe it thought that it blended in or something. So it just stood there. That one has me puzzled. So what do you think about this sighting? Drop me a comment down below. This Bigfoot sighting comes from Dallas County, Alabama from July of 1985. The witness said that it was a hot and clear day while she was driving home on a country road that she was about one mile from her house when she saw up ahead of her these dark figures approaching the side of the road saying that they were standing there in close proximity to each other. Now the witness said as she was nearing them that she could see three distinct and different sized figures. Now with her slowing down her speed, she says that she has lived in the country all of her life and that she grew up playing and hiking in this whole countryside and that she knows the area around her home very well. While she always loved watching the wildlife in the woods, but that she didn't know what to make of the creature she was looking at. She says that as she was getting nearer to these things, that they appeared to be of a various heights. She said that one was around two feet, or maybe a little more while the next one was around three and with the other being around five foot or more that they all had shaggy hair all over them that it was brown to black in color she said that she couldn't see any facial features but these creatures were standing up on two legs with their arms being long way longer than you would expect to see on something this size now the witness said that they appeared to hesitate as though they couldn't decide what to do as she was approaching them. Then all of a sudden they ran across the road in front of her and vanished into the thick underbrush and trees on the other side. Now the witness said that they did not stoop over to run, that they remained on two legs and stayed upright while moving with a swiftness. These things were fast, but with a smoothness to them. She says that she was stunned at this moment, that she knows most of the wildlife in the area, but she didn't know what these creatures were, that she had never encountered or seen anything like them. She says that she started slowing down even more, 
that she thought she would stop and try to see them and where they had went. But that all of a sudden it hit her that she had just seen something that just can't be explained away. Other than these creatures are not normal animals. Saying that this really spooked her. While all of her hair on the back of her neck started to stand straight up. She says at this point, she hit the gas and sped home, where she told her husband and sons what she had just seen. She says that she will never forget what she saw that day, while stating that she knows what she saw and that it will always be with her. So that was a nice sighting. So do you think it was just three young ones out playing? Or were they just ahead of their parents? Or had they fell a little behind and didn't know what to do when they saw the car coming? Or was it just something that can't be explained? So what do you think? Drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think. This Ohio Grassman sighting comes out of Adams County, Ohio from November the 9th of 2012. The witness says that he was taking his four-year-old cousin for a ride on an ATV while they were going up a hill on an old cattle road, he says, when all of a sudden the witness heard a loud thumping sound. The noise came from behind them. Not being for sure what the noise was, the witness says that he turned around to look. At this time, he says he saw a large creature, that this thing was very hairy and manlike, while only being about 10 feet behind them, chasing them up the hill. The witness said that they were only going about 10 miles an hour, that he was able to get a good look at this creature, which he estimated to be around 10 feet tall, which sounds right to me. It said that the grassman is the largest of the Bigfoot type creatures out there, with this thing having long hairy arms. Saying that this creature also had a large head, while well, he didn't notice much of a neck, at least not one that was visible to him, but that it did have a flat nose with large eyes, saying he thought it had a mouth as well or at least what was possibly a mouth, he said. Due to the incline and the ruts in the trail, they couldn't go much faster. Now he said that his four-year-old cousin also turned his head and looked at the creature, that he just pointed at it for a few seconds as they were fleeing. The witness said as they topped the hill, he laid on the gas. While well, getting the ATV up to around 30 miles an hour, so at this point he was able to put some distance on the creature, but surprisingly not as much as he expected. Now the witness says that as they were pulling away from this creature and about to get back onto the dirt road, that this creature threw a big stick, or what could even be said to be a log, but that it didn't even come close to hitting them. Now, when the witness and his cousin got back to the house, that he was still stunned over what he had seen. Well, his four-year-old cousin thought that it had been fun, being chased by a big hairy man. Now, the witness says that he had another sighting in the same area, that it was again in November of 2013, that it was a few days before deer hunting season that he was riding again on his ATV, looking to find a place to set up his hunting blind. The witness states that he was alone this time, that he had his portable blind, that he also had his deer rifle and a set of binoculars with him. He said that he decided to set up near a deer path that one that he knew they used that he was approximately 200 yards southwest of his first sighting just a year before. The witness says that after he got set up and sitting, that he started scanning the area, 
looking towards the deer path in the wood line, when he noticed what appeared to be a large, dark gray head just staring back at him from behind a large tree that it was covered with hair. Now the witness said that he didn't see the creature with his binoculars, that when he looked away to get his binoculars and looked back, that it was gone. So the last sighting wasn't a long sighting, but it is interesting to me, just because the second sighting happened almost a year apart. So could this be the time of the year that they are migrating through this area? I guess that's something to think about. So I hope you enjoyed this sighting report. If you have any comments, please drop them below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you can keep up with all of our latest videos. This Bigfoot sighting comes out of Fairbanks County, Alaska. From the late 1970s, the witness says that he was part of a group of about a dozen army personnel training that summer in this area, saying that they were above the tree line and that they had camped there for several days. He says that he was looking across the nearest valley when he spotted movement. It was on a rocky mountainside saying it was steep and bare terrain, with snow fields descending down the hillside, saying that it was moving up the valley about a half a mile away, that when this creature crossed over the snow, that you could see plainly that it wasn't a bear, that this thing was walking upright on two legs, while having long strides and moving fast through the snow that its arms was swinging back and forth. Now he said it was dark in color like a bear, but that he has seen many bears in this type of terrain, and that this thing wasn't a bear. It moved wrong, and bears don't swing its arms as it walks. And he said that it was just too big to be a human, and way too fast. He says that he pointed this creature out to the other guys that was there at the time and that they watched this thing until it was gone. He said once it came out of the snow that it just blended in with the rocky terrain. Now he says that they all wanted to go and look for tracks, but that no one went, due to the main reason they were kind of scared of what they had just seen. Now saying that, they all had to sleep there that night. This was just a little unnerving, he said. And no one went outside of the tent that night. So what do you think this group of army soldiers saw that day? Drop me a comment down below and let me know. This Bigfoot sighting is an old sighting. It comes out of Shasta County, California from the spring of 1977. The witness says that his family and him went camping on Lake Shasta and that they stayed at a campground called Antler Campground. His family and him walked over to a cove on the lake where they had a family picnic. But after the picnic, that him and his cousin wanted to stay and fish the cove, while his little sister Kim also wanted to stay and fish. The rest of the family went back to the boat dock. Now after a while, his little sister wanted to go back to the family. So he started walking her back to the boat dock where their older sister was and that Kim wanted to be with her. That from the cove to the boat dock was about a quarter of a mile. Now he says that while he was taking her to the boat dock, he says he heard something walking with them. The witness said if he stopped, then the other sounds would stop also. Seeing that he didn't see anything, so he wasn't for sure if it was anything or not. So he just kept walking to the dock. After dropping his sister off, the witness started back to the cove. The witness said after a few minutes into the return trip that he started to hear the footsteps again. But that now the footsteps were closer and that he could see some kind of movement in the shadows. Thing as he kept walking, 
that it sounded like it was getting closer to him, saying that he stopped again and listened, when all of a sudden something came crashing through the brush, heading straight at him, stating that he just stood there, maybe out of fear or just the surprise of it, saying as he was watching this thing come right at him, it stopped short of him by about five feet. He says at this time he could see plainly what was standing there, but that he really had a hard time believing what he was seeing. He noticed that this creature had big reddish brown eyes that just seemed to stare right through him. Now saying that this really creeped him out, he then said he noticed that this thing had huge muscular arms and very large hands. Just huge, he said. Now as his eyes lowered down toward the ground, he saw that the feet on this creature was huge. Then as the witness started lifting his eyes back up, he started to scan this creature, saying that this creature had big calves and thigh muscles. Now as his eyes kept scanning upwards, he says that this creature was definitely a male, saying that the creature was covered with dark brown hair, that he didn't notice if its head was pointed or not, that he was just too close to the creature to see the top of its head. He turned to his cousin and said, look, as he pointed. Now at this time, he says that his cousin gave out a loud scream and started running and jumped into the lake, saying that he gave a yell and did pretty much the same thing saying they swam out into the center of the cove while the creature just stood there watching them. He says that his cousin started swimming to the dock, but that he stayed where he was, that he guessed that he was just curious about this thing, but saying that he was very scared at the same time, saying that his creature looked back into the cove and that like it was startled or something, then it took off up the hill, saying that the hill was 40 to 45 degrees while being covered in brush and trees, but that this creature was fast, saying it covered 100 to 200 yards in just a few seconds, and then it was gone. Now that was a sighting, don't you think? So what do you think about this sighting? Drop me a comment down below. This Bigfoot sighting comes out of White County, Arkansas, from November the 26th of 2015. The witness says that he was hunting alone that day, that his cousin had dropped him off that day and would be back just after nightfall, saying that he had never hunted this area before that day, that it was on public hunting ground but that he found a nice spot not long after he got there, that it was on top of a hill and that it had a rock for him to sit upon with a great view of the woods and a nice open meadow. It seemed to be a great little spot. He says that he had been there for about an hour with little activity when all of a sudden he heard a low growling sound which seemed to go on for about 10 minutes. He says that he is a avid hunter and spends a lot of time in the woods, but that he has never heard anything like this before. While sitting there searching his mind, trying to figure out what was making the growling sound, stating he knew it wasn't a bear, a cougar, or any other big cat, then about 30 or so yards out, a pack of coyotes bursted out from the trees, running across the meadow. Now watching them till they went out of sight, when a rock was thrown in his direction, saying that the rock came out of the tree line. From the same area as the coyotes had came from, he says that this is when he grabbed his rifle and started watching the tree line for any movement. Now realizing that he would be alone in this unfamiliar area until after dark, 
with concerns of them being some kind of animal nearby. Maybe a black bear or some kind of big cat. Or maybe it's a feral hog. All of this was going through the witness's head at the time. He had a flashlight with him, not to use as a spotlight, just because he knew it would be after dark before his cousin would pick him up. He says that he saw a creature standing behind a large oak tree. It let out a low growl. It was the same growl he had been hearing earlier. When all of a sudden this creature let out a loud and powerful scream saying that this was when he pulled the trigger in a reaction to the scream. He said that this creature was at least eight foot tall, while having light brown hair, not fur, saying that the creature's arm wrapped around the front of the tree, and with the tree being at least three foot wide. Now he says as his light first hit this creature, he noticed the eyes, that they were a reddish yellow, but when he lowered the lights, its eyes were still glowing, he said. Now he says that he knows he hit the tree just by the sound of the bullet when he hit. This is when he said the creature took off running across the meadows. It headed the same way the coyotes went. He says that this thing was massive and bipedal, definitely running on two legs, and that it was fast that it cleared the whole meadow in three to four seconds. Now he sat there for a while trying to gather himself. Then he got up and walked over to the tree. The witness said that there were blood and hair on the tree. So he thinks that he hit the creature in the arm since the bullet hole was in the middle of the tree where the creature's arm had been. Now after a moment of reflection, all the hair on the back of his neck and arms stood straight up. Then he realized what he had seen and shot at. So at this point, he sat back down to gather himself again. After thinking about what had just happened to him, he decided to follow the path of the creature. Even though he knew he would be asking for trouble, he said he wanted to see if it might had went down. Now the interviewer questioned him on this decision. He said that he still had his gun, that it had ran once and would again if it was okay. I'm sure with his adrenaline going and thinking this creature was hit, I can see why he would want to make sure. If it was down, you would have the proof everyone keeps saying they need. Anyway, back to the sighting. He says that he walked five or ten minutes and had gone slightly off trail. When he said that he saw a teepee-like structure standing at least eight to nine feet tall, while having many different animal bones around it and being accompanied by an awful smell. When he heard a noise coming from across the open area near a briar patch, as he looked, he says that he saw a creature standing there, just looking at him. Now at this time, he started to raise his rifle, saying that the briar patch came up to his chest, while only coming up to this creature's knees and waist area. Then the witness saw a second creature. This one was shorter than the first one, but it was stepping out from behind a thicket. Within a second, a third one stepped out, this one probably being a juvenile, smaller than the other two. Now this one had reddish brown hair. The witness said that two out of the three had glowing eye shine. At this point, the witness didn't even consider taking a shot. The witness says at this point, he thought he was looking at a family unit, that he just stood there in awe that they all just stood there looking at each other for five to ten seconds. Then the three creatures just turned and walked off. The witness estimated that from the first sighting to this sighting, that about an hour had passed. 
Now he said that it was getting dark, so he headed back to meet his cousin at the spot where he had let him out. The witness said that the whole time he was in the woods that day was around five to six hours. I say that he had one great day or one total horror filled day. I guess it's just how you look at it. A lot of people would love to have seen these creatures up close like this. Then they are the people that just can't seem to accept these creatures, not even after they have seen them for themselves. Those are the ones that comes out as horror stories. So what did you think about this sighting report? Drop me a comment down below. This Bigfoot sighting, or should I say skunk ape sighting, since the sighting comes out of Lake County, Florida, from January the 15th of 2012. The witness stated that before making this report, that he had only told one other person about this that it wasn't his wife or any of his friends, but that it was a co-worker that he knew that had a sighting of his own in Utah, and that what he is about to describe has tormented him over the past several months. He says that he can't speak enough on just how much this encounter has affected him emotionally, but thanks to a good confidence, he is coming forward to share his sighting, hoping that this step will be the first in putting this incident behind him, so maybe he can get on with his life. He says that he didn't ask for this, and that if this event had been within his control, he would have never chosen to have such an experience. He said that his life was just fine with his previous view of reality. Even being as screwed up as it was. Now with all that said, the witness said that he grew up in a rural setting, that he loves the outdoors and nature. He says that he spends a lot of time in the wetlands and forests of Florida, that there isn't anything better to him than being in the vast and uninhabited wilderness that he is an executive in a large multinational corporation based in Orlando, Florida, saying that being shut up in an office building all week makes him just a little stair crazy. His job is very stressful and on the weekends, he really likes to wind down while hiking or canoeing, especially in the winter months when the temperature isn't so hot. On the morning of January the 15th, he was visiting friends in Lake Mac, which is a very small community in central Florida. He says that the Ocala National Forest was right across the street while he was visiting his friends. So after his visit, he thought he would go driving through the forest, maybe do a little hiking as he was heading home. That he was driving on a service road that the road was a one lane dirt road when he said the road started turning into soft sand. At this point, he got nervous about getting stuck. So he started to turn his car around. Now at that moment, he felt the car sink. He says at this time, he pulled left to the side of the road and was able to turn his car around. But that as soon as he started forward again, the car sunk back into the sand and was stuck this time. So he decided to dig out the tires. Now he says that he was on his knees and digging sand out with his hands. That he stood up and stretched out his back from being bent over for so long. When all of a sudden he felt a shooting pain that went through his inside left thigh. Just below his groin saying he let out a yell and backed up against the car. Then he noticed the rock fell from him onto the car, saying that this gave him a relief, that it wasn't a bullet or a snake bite, but that he turned back to the forest from where the rock had came from. Seeing a slight movement in the bushes, but it wasn't so much 
movement that he could say that something was there. So at this time, he says that he was unsure of what to do next. While standing there for about 30 seconds, checking out his surroundings, saying he looked up and down the road and at the forest that was right behind him. Once he turned back where he was before the rock had hit him, he heard a noise coming from behind him. It sounded like movement. It was the sound of leaves and sticks being crushed on the ground as if someone had taken one step and stopped. So at this time, he figured something was on both sides of the road. One in front of him where the rocket came from, a nail, someone or something that was moving behind him. Saying that he looked back to the trees where the sound came from. While he still didn't see anything, at this point, he said the fear really kicked in saying several things started running through his mind at the same time, such as hogs and bears. While it hit him pretty fast that hogs and bears don't throw rocks at people. So he says that he thought there were a couple of people messing with him. That he called out who's there. That this wasn't funny and that he could use some help getting his car on stuff. Now he says that with the fear mounting and his thoughts moving towards protection and not so much worrying about his car at this point, saying that he remembered that he had a can of UDAP in his backpack that was in the trunk of his car. So he walked around his car to his trunk, opened and pulled out his backpack, saying that when he slammed the trunk shut, he again heard movement in the trees on the south side of the road, while also hearing movement from where the rock had came from. Saying that he started unzipping his backpack, when all of a sudden something started making a loud hissing noise. Now the witness said at this point that he still hadn't visually identified what kind of animal he was dealing with. He said that the sound was like a feral cat would make it cornered, but much, much deeper and louder. Now he says that whatever this thing was started to alternate between a hiss and a loud vocalization. While hearing these strange and loud sounds, he says that it put him into flight mode, saying he jumped back into his car locking the doors when another vocalization sounded off. As the witness turned and looked out his passenger window towards where the sound had came from, this is when he got his first look at the creature, saying that this thing was about 15 feet into the woods. Now, as the creature got up and stood on two legs, saying that he saw its head first coming up from behind the sawgrass which is also known as palmetto. Then its back started to come over the palmetto as well. At this time, the witness thought that this creature was on all fours. He says the palmetto was around about four foot tall, that this creature then used his long arms to push itself up onto its two legs. Once this creature was standing upright, the witness said that the creature's head was obscured by those tree limbs, as was his legs and feet due to the creature standing in the palmetto. So at this point, the witness was looking at this creature's torso, only seeing through a three to four foot clearing between the palmetto and the branches of the trees. Now the witness said at this time, he was totally petrified that he started to look around his car, knowing the car was locked. The witness said that he still didn't feel safe, saying that he would estimate that this creature was around eight foot tall, while being very bulky and massive through its chest. With the creature's arms being long and muscular, while looking at this creature, the witness said, he didn't think this creature would have any problems ripping him from the car and tearing him to shreds. 
that he really didn't see this creature having much trouble with whatever it puts its mind to do to him. Saying that this creature also had a love handle, as he knows it, while its hair was black and gray, which appeared to be slicked down. He also said that he could see the lighter skin underneath the hair, saying that he thought the creature must have been wet, just by the way it looked to be slicked down and the way the skin came through in places. Now he says after this creature stood there for a few seconds, it then hunched forward and walked towards the east, parallel to the road, and disappeared into the trees. While this creature started walking, it put its right hand on a limb, which allowed the witness to get a glimpse of it. Seeing that this thing had about three inch hair hanging off of its wrist area. While the witness also said he saw the creature's palms as its arms swung upwards, that its color was a light gray to even an off white. Now the witness said that as it was moving through the brush and trees, he could see some of the trees move and shake as it moved along saying that the creature stopped again after moving 15 to 20 feet along the road. The vocalization and the hiss had stopped at this point, with everything becoming completely silent. After about a minute of witnessing no more movement, he saw a tiny portion peek out from the pine tree that was about 20 feet up the road from where he was. He couldn't see any details about the creature at this time. The weirdest part of this sighting to me is that the witness says that this creature seemed to be hiding and would peek out from a pine tree here and there, and that it appeared to be crouching down again, due to the creature seemed to be peeking out from about three to four foot off the ground. Now the witness said that it became obvious that the creature had reacted to the slamming of the trunk and car door. So not knowing what else he could do, he decided to try to scare this creature away. So he says he laid on the horn and started to open and slam his car door, hoping to frighten this thing away. To the witness horror, the creature came out from behind the tree. At this point, the witness realized that his action had evoked the opposite response that he was hoping for. When this creature came back out from the tree line, the witness slammed his door shut. At this time, the creature reared back and threw a soft ball-sized amount of brown, slimy, and lumpy material onto the hood of his car, saying that it had a consistency of wet peanut butter. Then the creature moved across the road using his arms and legs while being crouched over. As it went back into the woods on the other side of the road, one thing that the witness said he did notice at this time was that the creature was soaking wet. He could see water dripping off its arms as it was crossing the road, looking like a long-haired dog while being wet. He said he did notice the creature's face also, that it was dark gray in color, while having large dark eyes with a large mouth and thick lips, that its nose was human-like, but with one exception. Its nostrils was slightly flared and large, saying that it was more flat and sunken, saying that this creature looked like an ape except for the facial area, which seemed more human to him. Now that the creature was on the same side of the road as him and his car, the witness said that he started using his horn again, but that he didn't open his door back up, just in case this thing decided to attack his car. Now after about one minute of this creature disappearing into the woods, that it re-emerged once again. This time the creature was walking straight upright like a human. The witness said that this thing paused at the wood line again, 
Then with one big step, it crossed the road again. He says to his horror that this creature was carrying a child with it. This creature had both of its little creature's arms in its right hand, with the child seeming to be limp from the neck down, but was moving its head and eyes as it was watching where it was being taken. Once this creature made it to the tree line on the other side, it again paused and lifted the little creature up and placed it on its hip. While the juvenile creature wrapped its legs around the bigger creature's back and stomach, while hanging on to its chest area, saying that this creature was carrying this child just like a human would on their hip. Now the witness says that it never reemerged again, and that he never saw this thing again. Now he did estimate that the juvenile creature was around three foot tall and that the smaller creature was also different colored than the larger one, that it was a light brown with hints of red and blonde in it, and that the smaller one looked to be very, very thin. He says at this point that he just sat in his car, that after hours or so, he finally saw a couple of hunters coming down the road in a jeep. Saying once he got back on the road, that he headed home and never looked back. He says that he was never a Bigfoot believer, but oh my God, just how wrong was he? Wow, I guess he did have a wild sighting. I hope that making this report put this sighting behind him or makes it a little bit easier to live with anyway. So what did you think about this sighting? Drop me a comment down below. And if you like this sighting report, then give a thumbs up. While you're down there, hit that subscribe and notification buttons as well. So you can keep up with all of our latest videos. And thanks for watching those endless mysteries.